and Sarah Hanshain. Nice to meet you. Hi, so nice to meet you. So I really love this movie. Uh, can you tell all of us how the two of you came together to make this incredible film? Sure. So Shane and I have actually been working together on, on films for, for many years now. I, I think this is one of six we've done together. Um, but we were finishing our, our last film called The Sierra and the Unseen, which is a film we uh, shot in Iceland um, from 2015, 2014, really, to 2017. And that film tells the story of a woman named Braka who uh, communicates with spirits of nature in Iceland. Um, we think of it as a magically real film because it, it's, you know, it's, it's about a woman who's in touch with this um, kind of spiritual realm. Um, and we thought that archival material of volcanoes could kind of help to uh, tell the story of how Iceland came to be, uh, which was an important part of, of, of establishing the story of that film. Um, so we started researching archives of volcanoes in Iceland, and we stumbled across the story of Katia and Maurice Kapp that way. Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that, that was it. Yeah. So we we had a this a couple shots of volcanoes in the film, and we just thought it was magnificent. And we were working on another project. Um, but when when COVID began to emerge, uh, we were unable to do it. It was a project in Siberia, and so Sarah just had this idea of just like, oh, remember those volcanoes, and like we should we should check out what that story is like. And it was we knew that we could make the film as it was an all archival film, and. And then we were off to the races. Um, we we found the archive and uh, made a sort of development mm -hmm. development teaser and um, thought like, yeah, this this is this is the film we were meant to make right now. Tell me about the title, Fire of Love, and uh, how did you get the title? And at what point in the filmmaking process did you decide that you want this to be sort of a love story yeah. about both the love of you know the, the couple as well as their love? Well, yeah, we um, maybe I'll, I'll start by answering your second que question first, um, which is that we knew from the beginning we wanted to make uh, this film into a love story. Or actually, yeah, pretty much from the beginning. It was really when we read a sentence in a book that Maurice wrote um, after, you know, first being captivated by, by them as a couple. Um, but Maurice wrote, for me, Katya and Volcanoes, it is a love story. And with that, we thought this is not just a story of two people, but really love triangle, you know, between two humans and a planetary force. And, and we thought that that could be a, a playful approach um, to making a film. Um, we kind of had the, the title Fire of Love actually as a bit of a joke at first. <laughs> um, it, it first came from, uh, it's the title of, of a song and also an album by a band called The Gun Club, um, which was very popular in, in the eighties. Um, uh, it's a great song and it's a great album, um, but we kind of thought maybe we would change it along the lines, but there was something about just kind of tongue in cheek, which ended up very much being in line with the style of the film. Um, we, um, Chris, Maurice and Katya were so playful that we really wanted, um, you know, the film to feel playful and humorous and light, even though, of course, it grapples with themes of death and existentialism as well. Um, so uh, Fire of Love uh, just kind of yeah, we kind of couldn't part with it. Yeah, and I think we didn't, it just wasn't in the origin of the title, but mm -hmm. I think, you know, there's this Charles Burkowski poem uh, about walking through the fire. And that that really resonated with, with me and with some of us too, just that, you know, love is a kind of, can be a kind of walking through the fire too. And so putting those together, and we knew that there was a love triangle in this film between Katya Maurice and the volcano. So I thought that best <laughs> tied it together. Yeah, It's really great. You, know, you mentioned the, the humor and the, and the style of the film. I don't know if other people have said this already, but there were moments in the film that reminded me a little bit of like a Wes Anderson movie. <laughs> and uh, I don't know if it's the, the stock footage that you used from that, from that time period or the, the narration, the music, um, even some of the attention to details. Is that something that other people have said or is that something that um, you guys were conscious of? I can see this being like, almost like uh, Life Aquatic or something like that. Yeah, uh, it's definitely things that people have, have said. Um, we had one friend joke that this was the life volcanic. <laughs> um, <All right. laughs> but we actually we didn't watch Life Aquatic when we were making the film. Um, and uh, I, th I think where we kind of intersect is that Wes Anderson was very much influenced by films of the French New Wave. And yeah. we were as well. Um, for us, when we first came to the material, uh, I, I should say we were working kind of with two main 
uh, buckets of material. The first was 16 millimeter footage that Katya and Maurice shot themselves. Um, and most of the film is that footage. Uh, and then there was, of course, um, you know, uh, appearances on television um, through the 20 years that they were active um, uh, of other, other people recording Katya and Maurice. But in their own material, um, there is very much the hallmark, uh, kind of the, the signs of the French New Wave. Um, you know, for example, Zoom, like those fun snap yeah. Zooms. That was such a, such a, so stylish at that time. Um, the way that Katya and Maurice write, um, they published nearly 20 books, for example, uh, felt almost like the writing of, of Truffaut, of some of his narration and his films. So, so we really felt like they were kind of channeling, channeling the artistic movements of their time. So, um, with them kind of as our guide, we thought, okay, let's embrace this style. Um, let's embrace their spirit of play and let's put that into our film. And, and for Wes Anderson, he very much did the same thing um, with, with many of his films. Um, so we're, we're uh, yeah, we're definitely getting those comparisons, but, but Life Aquatic is, you know, a traveling band of uh, exploring oceanographers who wear red beanies and sometimes don yeah. silver suits. It's, it's very, <laughs> like, yeah. it's very clear. <laughs> Yeah. It's really great, and there's so few documentaries that uh, have as much style as your film does. I understand that you had access, as you mentioned, to just tons of uh, footage and photos. Can you give uh, the audience just a sense of the tremendous amount of work that went into making this film uh, and what it was like to dwindle down all that material into this final film? Sure. Um, so we had about 200 hours that Katya and Maurice themselves shot, and then just thousands of still photographs, um, probably close to 5,000 that we looked at. Um, and then they wrote about 20 books, which we read, and some of the expert excerpts show up in, in, in the film. Um, but then there was about 50 hours of recorded material from television broadcasts that uh, and documentaries that they were on. Um, so it was a total of, you know, 250 hours plus all of these still photographs and, and then all the the written material, um, but working with it was such a joy. Um, it was incredibly challenging because the archival material that they shot actually arrived to us without sync sound, which meant that um, we had to rebuild it all in, in, as we were editing. Um, but we had the tremendous joy and honor of working with two fabulous editors, um, Aaron Casper and Jocelyn Chapu, um, who are not just um, incredibly talented editors, but also dogged researchers. And so they went to great lengths to make sure that the sounds that they were incorporating into the edit were authentic, you know, um, were actual volcano eruptions. And, um, you know, they even put in like the precise sound of the right car engine that Katya and Maurice drove. Um, but uh, the fact that it didn't come with sound also kind of opened up a space to for creativity and a sense of play. Um, we like to think that the volcanoes are sentient and alive. <laughs> and um, and because of that, Erin, for example, in, in the scene in uh, Indonesia in 1979, she actually experimented with our, uh, dinosaur sounds <laughs> um, to add like this hint of monstrosity to, to the explosions. It was very subtle. You couldn't actually hear like a roar or a growl, but there was something larger um, that felt alive. Um, so. All to say, through through the editorial process, there's all kinds of limitations that we were confronted with just by the nature of, of working with this kind of material. But at each turn, um, there were new opportunities that kind of came forth from those limitations that we embraced. Yeah, and just to, to speak to the ambition, you know, Katya and Maurice had, they wrote 20 books, they had thousands of you know, photographs, mm -hmm. you know, the, the hundreds of hours of footage, but also we were trying to do something quite ambitious with the film as well, which was, to create this love triangle, a love story influenced by the French New Wave, but also have elements of, uh, uh, you know, there's like, we looked at monster movies and looked at <laughs> like red, red thing, you know, red Ionesco and, and Rilke and, and this kind of a, a poetic uh, articulation with a, with a narrator. So there were a lot of different strands in the film that um, we attempted to like weave together rather than most most documentaries that even we've worked on before which are relatively straightforward like if you have two or three plots that's a lot but here we had seven eight nine <laughs> elements that we had to weave together at every turn well one of the things that i think i love the most about the film and i think a lot of people did was that the film really explores a lot of philosophical deep uh, questions and in particular uh, the search for the meaning of life what is a purposeful life? Um, how you struck that balance between 
touching on a theme like that and also doing some of the other things you just mentioned is, is really miraculous. But can you talk to me a little bit about some of these uh, themes uh, that you explored in the film? Sure, yeah. I mean, I think for us, like the, the greatest sort of existential <laughs> thinking and philosophy is playful and is, is joyous. And I think Maurice and Katya embody that that spirit. And so we wanted to reflect that in the film as well, where the the search for the search for meaning, the the quest to live a meaningful life and die a meaningful death um, revolved around uh, the search for for understanding more about this world, even though we can never fully understand it. And that to us was a, a really like a, a, a signpost, a, a lamp um, in the dark for us. And it was something we really, we really tried to, we saw in Maurice and Katya and really tried to bring out in a new and fresh way for this, this time and place. Um, and, and we, the other themes involved in that are sort of, you know, the, the, the pursuit, the, as we were saying, the pursuit of understanding, the pursuit of knowledge in science and how um, our science can also be our, our art as well. You know, Maurice and Katya made cinema. They were, they were artists, but their cinema was used as a part of scientific research. So this idea too, that art need not be useful, but it sometimes has utility. And I think that that was a really profound um, part of the film for us too. You mentioned that they were filmmakers like the two of you. In what ways would you say that you're similar and in what ways are you different from them? Well, I've never thought of myself as a seal. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say that's one difference. What do you think? Yeah, you're not like an elephant seal, elephant that's seal for sure. Yeah. I, I do think that all of us on our team um, very much can relate to that impulse to like just go towards this passion. Um, I feel like our collaborators, we, we all very much are just in love with what we do. Um, and there's tremendous sacrifice in it. Um, it's incredibly hard to make films, and um, but we do it because we drive a sense of meaning from it. And that meaning is also derived from the love. So um, and I'm countless, you know, I'm inspired every day by getting to work with the people I get to work with. Um, uh, and so I, th I think there's, you know, a, yeah, I've never run on top of a, a lava flow <laughs> before. <laughs> um, uh, but I, I think that that kind of like um, that risk taking nature is something that I think we can relate to, um, even if we might not necessarily embody Maurice and Katya ourselves. <laughs> yeah, and I think that the film focuses on Maurice and Katya, but they they had a, you know, a, a merry band of pranksters yeah. with them. And I think like that is something similar for us just to to make to make things with people we care about and want and and believe in and, and respect their vision um, and to to, to learn and grow and, and share, you know, all of these attributes that Maurice and Katya, I think are shared by everyone on the team. Mm -hmm. And I think that was part of what, what drew us to them. Yeah, definitely. It, it was interesting though, that, that moment in the film, uh, when they realized that they were out giving lectures and doing a film festival or something like that. And they realized that, that people were dying. Yeah. Um, that, maybe making a film or like giving a lecture wasn't enough. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you take away from that thought of theirs? I mean, for me, it's it's not enough. Uh, and there will not, it will never, there is no enough. Um, we, we do what we can. And I think we all have our, our unique gifts that we are, that we try and understand and that we try and share with the world. And those will continue to grow and change and evolve over the course of a life. But the more we're in tune with what we have to give and the more we're capable of giving it, I think doing just that is, is that's, I think that's the spirit. Um, and that's, that's the closest we'll get to enough. Um, and I think, I think Maurice and Katya learned that eventually. And I think the, the not enoughness of, of life uh, is what, Kind of also spurs us on is what what compels us to keep going and to keep striving for to be to be better to give more to to understand more fully and uh, and I think that's I think accepting that um, is is a part of life and is a part of the totality of existence and Maurice and Katya like I think they got there they they got to that and then they fell off of that and then they got to it again and fell off of it again and 
and that itself is enough. Like that's that's a beautiful way to live too. Yeah. So, I, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say for for Maurice and Katya too. I, I feel like the first part of their lives was so much about seeking that understanding of volcanoes and that understanding being equated with their love. Um, but then they they kind of realized in this moment of with Mount Maurice in, in 1985 um, when they experienced this just absolutely staggering loss of life that if they could share their understanding with the world, make the world love and understand volcanoes, that that really could save lives. And so kind of what Shane mentioned earlier about art not necessarily needing utility, but it can have utility. I think they, they turn their greatest art into life-saving and a way for people to truly engage with and fall in love with the earth. And I certainly feel like I've fallen in love and understand the earth so much more deeply thanks to them. And it's, it's a great hope of ours that now and with people seeing their footage after, you know, it's been um, stored in an archival facility, not seen for 30 years, it's our hope that people will fall in love with the earth um, by witnessing their images and, and by doing so, hopefully um, be more inclined to protect it. So. Absolutely. And I was wondering, you know, sometimes a film resonates because of the time period in which it's released. And you kind of alluded to earlier this time period that we live in now. I assume you're referring to like the pandemic and wars that are going on. There's a lot of stuff going on right now. Yeah. And I was wondering, because uh, I'm sure you've shown this film all over the world, um, how are people responding to this film that is presumably about love and volcanoes and science? And, and and making it a unique uh, film for this time. Um, it's been really heartening to see the reception thus far. Uh, for us, we we were really just like working so hard in, in my little house in Berkeley, California, day day and night. Um, so the fact that people are are seeing this, we joke that it felt like like a high school art project or something <laughs> for so long. So it's still like ah, people are seeing our film. It's still kind of a surprise and it's quite a joy. Um, but it, it's been fascinating to see what people have been taking away from it. Um, We've heard people talking about, you know, just the love story element and, and how that felt surprising to them, um, but also the idea of reconciling fear um, and um, going towards danger and while trying to understand it, particularly at this moment when, you know, we're still in a pandemic. Uh, we very much made the film kind of as lockdown began and, and we were all trying to understand uncertainty and, and fear ourselves and the fact that Maurice and Katya can provide a story that, uh, one way of, of dealing with fear um, that's something that has been really interesting to hear people's reactions about um, yeah what else have we gotten no I, I think just you know the the I think one of the things Maurice and Katya teach is that um, we all, they, they remind us that we all are going to die, but it's how we live that matters. And, and that in our life, we have a chance to do something. Um, and as Sarah was saying, you know, with their, their work, they had a chance to help save lives and to help in further our understanding. And, and I think um, that's important right now. I think it's important in a time that can sometimes feel helpless and when the problems can feel so large that it's not worth trying anything, mm -hmm. that they are, they are sort of paragons of, of trying and doing and exploring and figuring out what can be done. And I think people are, I think that's, that's relevant right now um, more, more than ever. Well, I, I just want to tell you that this is, in my opinion, one of the best documentaries I've seen over the past year. It's, it's really a special film and we've accomplished so much in it. And I'm so glad that people are going to revisit their work, but uh, all the different issues you know, that you talked about uh, are so important and such an extraordinary job mixing art and science, and music and uh, philosophy. Um, I just want to say thanks so much for talking to me and uh, you did such a great, great job. Well. So thank you so much and thank you so much for just having the film at your festival and, and coming to see it it means so much to us